Well, good morning. 7.30 in the morning. 65 degrees here in the shop. And uh, I don't tend to run the heater too much at night. I have 55 degrees in the shop in the morning is okay because it's going to warm up during the day. And so I don't like to heat the shop and then have it get really hot. You know? I don't mind it being cool. Amazing how guitars just go out of tune on you. He's in tune in the house, there we go. This is a 72 D28. I'll play it a little bit first, then we'll talk. guitar it's a 72 and man this guitar was a lot of work I had a lot of trouble with it <laughs> um, none of it was really the guitar's fault it was just my fault but anyway what I did to it uh, was pretty much a standard um, D28 overhaul I uh, got Waverly tuners it got frets and I think I did 15 frets you know I don't remember I think I did 15 frets I might have done them all 15 um, scalped the braces, put a bridge plate on it, scooted the bridge back, and I did a new bridge. Now the bridge is where the fun stuff came in, because the owner said he wanted a two and one quarter inch bridge spacing, which is cool. I love two and one quarter inch bridge spacing over two and one eighth. Um, you know, it's one of my favorite. I mean, two and three sixteenths and, you know, on and up. But a two and a quarter is when the magic starts to happen for me. Uh, that just a little extra spacing just feels so roomy to me. I love two and a quarter. Anyway, so normally what I've been doing here is drilling out the stock bridge and plugging it with ebony dowels and then redrilling the holes where they need to go. And all that's been happening just great. I've done four or five bridges like that. I went to drill his stock one and it just split right in half. Pa -pow. Well, you know, so you think, oh, that's terrible, but you know, maybe that bridge was stressed, maybe it was going to crack anyways. Um, not the end of the world. So, okay, fine, I'll put a new bridge on. Trouble is, there's an order that you have to do this in, and you know that scalloping and the bridge play are going to affect the action. Well, so I, I do those first, right? I do the scalloping, I do the bridge play, and then I've got a brand new bridge plate in there, and I don't want to drill the old two and one eighth of an inch holes in it. Plus, I got to scoot the bridge back. So my thought was, okay, I'll put the two and a quarter inch spacing in, and then I'll drill the holes. Well, the bridge broke, and now I didn't have a chance to check the action. So I never knew where his saddle was. You see, you know, was his saddle good? Was his saddle a little bit low? Because if it was a little bit low. I'd probably make the new bridge just, to, you know, 20 thousandths of an inch lower to get the saddle exposed. And I didn't have that baseline anymore. So, yikes, you know. So, I, you know, no problem. I took a straight edge right here. 
and I ran it down the fingerboard like this, which you may have heard of as a, as a test to see where the neck is. And it should clear the bridge by, you know, so much. Generally, when the guitar is unstrung, um, I like to see this clear the bridge by quite a bit, you know, like a hundred thousandths of an inch or so. And that's just my experience. Once in a while, you would get a guitar that lies to you. And that straight edge measurement is not accurate. The most accurate measurement I found is putting a bridge on there with the saddle height you want and then putting just a little bit of tension on the two E strings and measure the 12th fret here. And if I get 60 thousandths of an inch, when it's strung up, it's going to equal about 93 thousandths of an inch, you know, 90, and then I can work with that. The straight edge lied to me. So I made a bridge and I lowered it, got it to where I, the straight edge said it was going to be good. I put it on, put a saddle on, and oh my gosh, you know, I was going to have to go 40 thousandths of an inch taller on my test saddle, which was going to be way too tall of a saddle for a vintage guitar, or for a vintage slot. Too tall anyway. It was going to end up with the saddle about 180 thousandths of an inch high, which is just way too tall. 180, 190, it was just, no. Especially since he paid me to put a new bridge on, you know. It's not right. Great. So, I took that bridge off. Put another bridge on that I made. Put that on there. And then I was thinking about other things. Preoccupied. <laughs> And I messed up one critical measurement, and that is the distance from the edge of the bridge to the pin. And they ought to be centered, you know, your, your pins ought to be centered in the bridge. So this distance should be the same as this distance over here. And the distance from the edge of the pin to the edge of the wing right here should be the same. So all the holes ought to be centered on the bridge and everything ought to look nice and symmetrical. And when I put the bridge on, did I glue it? No, I didn't glue it. I don't think I glued it. I don't remember if I glued it or not. Anyway, I was trying to make it work. And I was having to scoot the bridge over and over and over and over and over and over to get that line, the strings lined up because at two and a quarter of an inch spacing, um, there's no room for error here. These strings have to run exactly down the fingerboard, you know, because it goes right with the taper of the neck. Two and one eighth of ears in, which is probably maybe why they do it, I don't know, because it does give you a little margin of error that's not noticeable, but two and a quarter's got to run perfect. And I was having to scoot the bridge over. Yeah, I did glue it on. The pinholes weren't lining up anymore on my new bridge plate. So I thought, ah, oh, shoot, you know. I plug the pinholes, I go there and I plug the bridge plate, and maybe I can drill through and catch the old holes, and you know, because I still have to ream them and everything. I did all that, and I just kept looking at it, and I go, this sucks, it's just it's not right. The guy's paid me for a brand new bridge plate, and a brand new bridge, and he's not paying for a cobbled up work of, of of compromise here. I just kept looking at it and looking at it, and I didn't drill the holes. I just, nah, this isn't right. This is not right. I've got to make a new bridge, and it's got to be 40,007 inch taller than the, uh, than the first, second bridge I made, first bridge I made. <laughs> so there's no way around it. I needed to pull that bridge, throw it in the trash, I needed to also pull the bridge plate and put a fresh brand new bridge plate in there because that's what he's paying me to do, right? The only problem was with all that is there's a K&K &K pickup stuck to it and I decided to put the K&K &K on there because I was waiting for something to dry and I thought well I'll put the K&K &K on and that's a mistake, don't put the K&K &K on and again I was preoccupied, don't put the K&K &K on until you are done. <laughs> so I looked in there, and fortunately one of the elements had fallen off on the K&K, &K, and the reason is I used a different super glue, and um, it's not strong enough, basically. So, so, okay. So I was able to pry all the elements off. With, uh, actually, pretty easy. 
pop them off with my finger, which is not good. So it's a good thing I went in there and did that. So long story short then, I ended up taking my bridge plate off, throwing it in the trash, taking that bridge off, throwing it in the trash, starting all over from scratch. I spent a week, you know, working on the guitar to get to that point, messed it up. So I had to do it right. So this is the third bridge I put on it. And I measured, I guarantee you, I measured everything carefully. And the end result is it's really, really nice. Now, I did it, I mean, it's perfect. I look at it now, and the saddle height is perfect. I used the 60 thousandths of an inch. And what I did was I clamped the bridge on to the, um, to the top. I just got a, a C-clamp, you know, and tightened it on there. And then I put a drill bit under here that it was the height of the saddle I wanted. Because I hadn't cut the saddle saw yet, you know, that's the last thing I do to get the intonation correct. So I laid a drill bit up there that was the height I wanted, held the string down, because I haven't got holes punched in it yet, held the string down, measured it 60 thousandths of an inch, and I was good. You know, I felt com I felt confident with that one. So I glued this, I, I drilled the holes, spent all morning getting those holes perfect. And then actually I spent all evening and then I left it sitting there on the bench and I came back in the next morning and took another look at it and rechecked everything and was real happy with it. Drilled the holes, put it in, cut the saddle slot and the saddle is like perfect now. I mean, it's, it's, it's good. So it's better than the first time, you know. Um, got a new maple bridge plate in there. That's beautiful. And I went and got the gel super glue that I used to use and I was out of. And that is, by the way, the Gorilla. If you ever have to put a K and K on, the Gorilla gel super glue is the good stuff. It's stronger. It's more, um, it's good stuff, okay? Oh, well, I got it all done. And, uh, you know, Dodo was pretty apologetic. He's, he apologized for the trouble. But no, no, it's, it's my problem, you know. Um, and two and a quarter inch, like I said, is my, is my favorite spacing. The strings are even coming down the neck. You get a little bit extra room. It's real easy to hybrid pick. So I guess that's why I like it because it's easy to get your fingers in there. I just like two and a quarter of that. So I got it. But I'm just telling you this because, you know, it's not always cut and dried and um, parts changing here. Sometimes there's a certain order you got to do things in and sometimes you run across unexpected things like the bridge cracking uh, that throw your order off and then you've got to think, hmm, you know, how do I deal with this, you know? So, I'm happy with it. I like it. There's a bridge. There's your saddle height. It's glued in, two and a quarter. Then after I played it for a little while, he said, um, I want you to tell me about the neck. How's the neck feel on it? First of all, the neck is fabulous on this guitar. This is like one of the best necks um, ever. This is the perfect neck as far as I'm concerned. It's chunky. It's got a nice even taper, so it's chunky down here too. It's got a, just a slight rounded V to it. It's not a C-shaped baseball bat. It's got a nice, nice V. Uh, God, if I had this neck on every guitar I owned, I'd be very, very, very happy. In fact, I'd like to have this guitar someday if you ever want to sell it. This is a good guitar, really good guitar. This neck is, is just perfect. And I don't remember if it was this one or another one that I did recently. The fingerboard was a 20-inch radius rather than the normal 14 and 16. Um, I can't remember if it's this one, but the fingerboard feels really good. Just the whole guitar is really comfortable to play. As I played it, I didn't like, uh, the nut was really bothering me. And it's an ivory nut. Yeah, it's ivory. It's the original. I didn't want to replace it. All the string heights are really good. But the, the spacing was cramped. You know, typical uh, center to center balance here, which means that your low strings are really cramped and really close together. There's not much space between them. The centers, yeah, the centers are the same, but because they're bigger strings, it's just cramped. It just was driving me nuts. So what I did was cut the slots deeper on the A, the D, and the G. The B, the B was pretty good. And then I filled that in with bone, not, not super glue and, and dust, because that's not a, 
or durable enough repair. You cut that slot deep, you fill that in entirely with bone or ivory or whatever, um, and then cut a new slot. And this way you're dealing with bone on bone and everything's nice and solid. And you can see, you know, it's got just a little bit of a mark right up there. But I got the spacing where I want it. And that was one of the last things I did. It was the last thing, actually. And now, <laughs> you know, you got to make your C chord or your G, G6. And there's room for your fingers in there. If you ever make this C chord, man, that's nice having these strings where you can get your fingers in there. Like that. Not touching. So when I did the nut spacing, man, then it just really got good. And now it's just so comfortable. You can use your fingers. Lots of room for the chords. A B7 chord. Especially a B7 chord. I noticed that because there's just room for my fat fingers in there. It's balanced feeling. Very, very comfortable, very natural. Okay, so this one's going in the box, and I just wanted to do a quick video on it. I end up, I end up talking for half an hour, so there's so much for the quick video. But we're going dirt bike racing um, today, tomorrow. So I wanted to make sure I got this guitar done before then, just in case you know things happen. Yeah, those chords are just so nice there. They fall under your hands really good. Okay, the intonation. I was supposed to correct the intonation. I moved the bridge back about an eighth of an inch, and there's actually the original finish was under there, so I didn't even put a finish touch up. I just left the original finish under there, which is kind of cool. That happens once in a while. You can see the mark, but it's the original finish, so I didn't add anything or take anything away. Here's E. tune with the harmonics and there's a reason if there's any dents or anything in the string anything that messes up it's going to mess the harmonic up um, I don't think the harmonic is an accurate representation of the tuning I much prefer to use the open and fretted notes the, the string will stretch as you go down so the harmonic may not always match up to the 12th fret and you don't play harmonics um, sometimes you do you know but you don't you don't generally tune to the harmonic, so always tune to open and then a fretted note. Pretty good. Okay? So it's about as good as in tune as an acoustic guitar can be. And you can always do stuff. I do that a lot, you know. Um. I do a lot of floaty licks, and so I do like it in tune.
good. It's as good as acoustic guitar. Good detune, eh? It's as good as they get. 72, going home.